Welcome to Forever Exiled, a Path of Exile podcast. This is episode 39. I am Justin, aka Tags. And I'm Tyler, Wrecker of Days, if you know what I mean. You can tell I'm trying to get back into it because I forgot what I was saying the very first sentence in, <laughs> into our episode. <laughs> Wait a minute, what is this? Yeah, yeah. Forever Exiled, that's what it is, Ty. How are you? Yep. Good, how are you? Super. Um, Sweet. Before we get started, just a quick shout out to some new Patreons. We've got Ashwater, Lamelock, and Troy AU. Thank you guys for all joining the crew, supporting the podcast. We really appreciate it. For everybody else listening and all of our other Patreons as well, we love you guys. You can find out more information about our Patreon below, and uh, you can catch us in After Dark if you're one of our Patrons. <laughs> so, did did you have a good trip? I've been I've been laughing about your tweet since. You want you want to tell me about your trip to, since I t- before I tell you what I've been laughing about. What tweet? Well, no, I don't actually. You what had uh, you you sent a nice uh, tweety tweet on the Forever Exile thing, right? Yep. Hiking. Oh yeah, yeah. Hiking. Yeah, walking and, with my, uh, my girls. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I've been pretending in my head that uh, I would have to do all the editing and stuff for this weekend for whatever reason, like just you know imagining having a good time. And uh, I've been imagining you teaching me like how to edit, you know, so that you could go away and do stuff. Uh Uh, But according to your standards and your quality, and obviously I just keep laughing because obviously I picture myself not grasping it and you just being like, I don't know if I think you've seen the sketch. I think it was your brother that was totally into it, but just like just being this tech guy, just being like move and doing it himself. Who was that? You remember that? Jimmy Fallon did the it was like a sketch that he did where he was like an IT person helping somebody and he would try to like give them the instructions and he'd be like move because they wouldn't yeah. do it and he'd like kick them out <laughs> <laughs> just like the it guy with no patience that so i pictured me. you just like move as you're trying to explain how editing works to me so anyway i've been having a good time since your mountain tweet yeah it was a good i had a great week i this this is going to be a fun podcast for you because this is all this is all tyler <laughs> this is a this is a all no wrecker uh podcast i didn't get a whole lot of poe in this week i took off so we we recorded early last week for our last episode um, quickly got that edited and then left the next day and we drove all right let me i'm going to tell you a little bit about my trip because i don't know how much i told you this is kind of a catch-up for justin and tyler too yeah so uh this 45 minute episode is probably going to be 46 we'll sprinkle some path of exile in there Uh, (laughs) (laughs) so we it the we were driving up there and it's, I don't remember how long the drive is. It's maybe four hours, four and a half hours, something like that. And I had to buy a, I don't even know what you call it. It's like a carrier because we don't have like a truck or, you know, I'm not in a van or anything, but I got a lot of kids. So in order to fit suitcases and stuff, we needed something to bring, you know, carry behind the vehicle. Yep. So I bought this carrier that attaches to your hitch and then straps so that I could hook on you know, I could put uh, suitcases onto this thing and then, you know, then we've got all the room inside the car and, and it's great. Okay. And so we drove uh, up there and about halfway we stopped. And right before we stopped, I said to my wife, I'm like, you know, there were notes about this carrier that people talked about on online about concerns with your exhaust. But, you know, I, I think we're probably fine. I got out at that stop. We pulled into a Walmart parking lot. Three of the four suitcases looked like you had just dipped them in lava they are <laughs> and, and it was all my kids suitcases my my suitcase with my wife was totally fine but their three suitcases were just like they it was it was insane how much damage your exhaust just a, just a fyi here's my tip of the week don't put things <laughs> close to your exhaust it was like maybe a foot maybe about like 13 inches is the distance from the exhaust to the thing uh to the tra- like the where this carrier trace it, but it didn't raise it any higher. Like it was literally level with my exhaust and on my yeah. vehicle, the exhaust shoots straight out. It doesn't go down or off to the side or anything like that. Yep. At all my kids were upset about their luggage because their luggage <laughs> just looks mangled. It like, I was even like, are we going to be able to open this? Like on one of them, you can't lift the little arm thing or whatever it is oh, so. so you can't use the wheels oh nope so yeah at walmart i had to like rearrange all my kids inside the vehicle so i could pull those three pieces of <laughs> luggage into the car and then once we got up there like we were staying at a mountain which was beautiful we had a great time but you're about half an hour outside of 
the city. And so we had to go into the city. I had to go to Princess Auto and buy like a ginormous steel piece that like extends the hitch and then raises it up. Oh, yeah, like yeah. Five yeah. inches and brings it out and stuff. And and it cost more than the hit, the trailer itself. It doubled the it doubled the cost of that carrier. <laughs> yes, it did. But it worked. We were able to at least drive home and, and nothing melted, remelted, which was which was great. But you no, know, I had a great time, man. It was so nice. It was like stupidly hot, but lots of hiking and went to a zoo, which was disgusting. My kids had a great time. It was fun. I guess I, it would have been the same temperature here, right? It was like low 30s probably the whole time, hey? We were, no, we, the, the day that we were at the zoo was 37 degrees. And it was like, it's a very dry heat there. You Fahrenheit listeners have to look that yeah, up. Yeah, sorry, I don't know how to do the math. Seven million, <laughs> roughly. <laughs> yeah, uh, Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, that's right, seven million. Uh, it, it was really hot. Yeah. But at the zoo, mm-hmm. they had like a water park and stuff. But okay, so the place that we rented, beautiful place. Kids had a blast. It was really nice, but they don't have air conditioning. And that's not uncommon. You know, I've realized the more I've been looking into air conditioning, it's not actually common out here where we live as it is like a lot of people listening, especially in the U.S. It's like that's just standard. Everybody has air conditioning in their house. Uh, That's not really common up here. And then if you go up onto the mountains, it really doesn't make sense because, I mean, we've gone up to the mountains before. It's you're up there in the wintertime most of the time. It's quite cool. You definitely don't need AC. So this house did not have AC, which was fine. There was like a four or five hour window during the day where you were inside the house hitting like 27, 28 degrees, which that's hot okay. for inside a house. Yeah. And my kids, I don't know what is wrong with their heads, wanted to be in the hot tub at least twice a day. <laughs> like the place we rented had a hot tub and I'm an idiot. I should have turned the temperature on the hot tub like to the lowest it could go. So that it was at least not, I left at, this is Fahrenheit for your American listeners, 103 is what the hot tub was set to. And I'm an idiot and never until like the last day realized, oh crap, I could have just turned this temperature down. So we would be like hanging out, hiking, having a great time, super hot, get home and they'd be like, oh dad, can we go in the hot tub? I'm like, why? What is wrong with you? Why would you want to go in the hot tub right now? But no, it was great. I had a great time. It was nice to just check out a little bit. So. And you were gone for how many days? We did a week. That's awesome. We were gone for a whole like week. Like a legit week, right? Yep. Seven days. I, it, I still had to work. That's just how it worked. You know, there's no fully checking out for me, but it was at least really cool to just be in a place hanging out there, not worrying about so yeah. much stuff. So how was your week? Yeah, go, go, up to, uh, go up to the mountain for a hot tub. I'm, I'm still giggling at the prospect of you going for still half of your long trip with a trailer that has one suitcase in it. <laughs> I'm still laughing the at whole that prospect. Half, yeah. of, yeah. It was like the left side of it had stuff on it and the right side was empty. And I was laughing at my brother today because uh, we were working on our yard and doing stuff with the grass and a big wall we're building in tomorrow. And yeah. we had a guy who was here with, okay, he had like a little, I don't even know what you call them. It's a machine. It's like, it's a, it's a, a hoe and a excavator all in one. Like it's this mini yeah, little, little toy. Backhoe. And this guy was like a pro driving this thing around. I don't know how he doesn't tip over, but he had also a trailer that he was loading up. So we were taking it up and doing like multiple dumps of all the stuff we had to get rid of. Yeah. So this thing's like, I don't know, 20 feet, 15, 20 feet long. And he's dragging it with his truck. And I was laughing to my brother afterwards. I'm like, I don't know how people drive these vehicles with these huge attachments to them. And they're so chill and they're fine. Meanwhile, I've got like something that sticks out like four feet from the back of my car and I'm thinking like can I make this like and I it's I don't know it totally the first half of my trip totally effed with my head because I was like that guy behind me is gonna hit me he's too close and and <laughs> it, it, which is stupid because you could open the trunk like for god's sake it wasn't like it was sticking yeah, out yeah. that far but yeah it cracked that's me awesome up. but anyway it's, how was your uh, week oh it was it, it was good I'm kind of uh also giggling here because our uh our non-canadian listeners yeah. Uh, they're probably like, man, these guys talking metric. Then they go back to Imperial. It's like, you know fault. what I mean? <laughs> no, it's it's funny because, you know, like our parents generations talk in Fahrenheit, but we're Celsius. We yeah, my mom, my mom She's talks Fahrenheit. in Fahrenheit. And uh, but I mean, that's, you know, we're we're only third generation. I'm third generation Canadian. Right. Otherwise, everybody else was from Europe before my parents. 
And uh, so they're like Fahrenheit, but then we talk in pounds instead of kilos. But, you know, who really measures in centimeters? Well, when you measure your kid's temperature, you do a Celsius. I do Celsius. And we do Fahrenheit. And that's yeah, only see, because so... it was defaulted on the therm thermometer when we bought it. Yeah. And, I, and you can't read those instructions because it always comes in Spanish and that's not our second language. Which is weird because as a Canadian, if you were like, my kid's got a 37 temperature, I'd be like, what is that? Is that equal to? Are you over 104? Because 104 is what we're worried about. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. My new phone yeah. I got from Amazon.ca and it came with Spanish only instructions. For those that don't know, in Canada, Amazon.ca, Canada, English is the first language. French is the official second language. And depending on your multicultural re region, you might have a whole bunch of other. But uh, Amazon.ca is all American orders, though, it's anyway. It's so crazy. All of but our stuff. It's is still, from still like I could read some of it because I uh, Portuguese, but yeah. it's still not Spanish. This COVID-19 anyway, is killing all... me because I can't order anything <laughs> from the States. Hey, I know you're a you're a dot com only. I, I do like dot com because their shipping's better. But. Remember I, I was talking about that stuff I bought from that company that I was hoping was Canadian, yeah, seedranch.ca? Yeah. Uh, FYI, their website doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> I'm pretty <laughs> sure I got screwed. It says it's still in Florida, but their website does not load anymore. And I'm like, oh, crap, those guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, well, that what happened was because everyone in the world listens to this podcast when you announced that website everybody went to it the feds got to it and been. you got screwed out of what 80 bucks yeah what well, us that's like 400 dollars canadian <laughs> yeah i know you're kidding it feels like it sometimes how was your week man? i i sorry for delaying your question i had a great week uh my kids um so i've been playing you know with my buddies online right some red dead online divinity dark souls my kids love seeing the Dark Souls boss battles. And so we now go for when we walk the dog, though my dog actually tore her ACL. So we're not going for walks much. But just before she did that, my kids were on the spree of wanting to go. We don't go for dog walks. We go for Dark Souls walks. And All so right. they got like their two mini hockey sticks they have of their, you know, Canadian hockey teams. Right. And then they're walking. But they're actually daggers. They're not hockey sticks. So they're big swords. And my son's always asking me like, hey, should I bring this sword does 20 damage, but it attacks slow. But this one does 14 damage, but it attacks fast and it has poison. <laughs> and so he's asking me which one I should he should bring. And so I tell him, about, well, this, the, I'm a dot guy, so I'm going to say the dot one. And then he looks at me like I'm an idiot. He puts the dot one down. He picks up the big heavy hitting one. But anyway, we go for Dark Souls walks. And what that means is when we're walking, they're like fighting and fighting and fighting. And every time there's shade on the sidewalk, they sit down cross-legged at a bonfire and rest until I catch up. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny that you say that. It's not anywhere in your notes, I don't think, but you texted me a hilarious note about your son and Al Hazim. Were you going to bring what? that Al Al Hazim? Oh, no, I wasn't going to bring that up. I try. Yeah. I, I hate you see, I hate how much I talk about my I love talking about my kids. Yeah, but nobody else wants me to talk about my kids. So I do my best to say almost nothing, but yeah, I but do enjoy some of the small stuff. You stories. have to tell them what a five year old <laughs> said to you. So. All right. All right. All right. So. I never knew he saw this battle like if he saw like because I see sometimes my YouTube videos. I want to see how I sound with my crappy Xbox mics and stuff. So I have my YouTube videos up sometimes. And my son came up to me today or yesterday, whatever it was. And he's like, hey, dad, Al Hazim has green portals because he does chaos damage. <laughs> and I look at him. I didn't know he saw the battle. Maybe he was right beside me for all I know, but I don't remember. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's right, son. Good job. He's like. <laughs> He's tricky, but you just have to be on the opposite side of the snakes. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I would, I've never, ever thought that about the portals. I thought that was so funny when you sent that to me. I was like, dang. Yeah. Hey, unfortunately, GGD didn't color code any of their other conquerors. We have two white ones, even though one of them's red, and then we have a yellow one. Then there's no yellow powers. But anyway. But yeah, funny. went for some Dark Souls walks. It was cool seeing my kids resting at some bonfires and filling up their Estus flasks. He, they even do like that empty sign you know when they oh, yeah. try and you try yeah, and when you try your drink. ss black but you have none left and you get stuck in that animation that kills you and oh man so I, my wife was gone right for uh for a month right just got back from the yukon today and uh so i'm you know i'm cooking like always and uh, I've, I've always felt like such a tough guy cooking onions like i am i'm the like i don't cry cooking onions this is the best i'm like 
just going away. I'm putting in way more onions than I should just because I'm feeling so freaking tough about cooking all these onions. And my wife informs me that we've been buying tearless onions since the dawn of time. They sell a tearless onion? I didn't even know that. So I looked at the bag and yeah, right on it, it says tearless. And we've been buying the same stuff because at Costco, you don't get an option. It's like, hey, you want onions? This is the bag you're buying. And I, and I didn't know they made tearless onions. That's like Jerry Seinfeld making fun of wa- seedless either. watermelon. You know. So anyway, yeah, here I am. This my whole life thinking I'm like the toughest guy in the world. And here I'm, I'm, I'm not even a parent. That's how weak I am. That's, that, was, that was very discouraging. Hmm. Cool. And uh, I had a new, new stage of parenting kick in this week. Yeah. Or not this week, but this month while my wife was gone. I realized... So my kids were playing with Lego, not a set of Lego, but just like a huge pile of generic Lego. And they were being really creative. Right. And it was like four hours on the day that we were Sabbathing and they didn't want to play with me at all. But they were like building these huge, awesome things. And all of a sudden I realized, like, I'm not the parents of like little children. I'm not a parent of little children anymore. Now they're kids. They're growing up. And it was kind of weird. I sat back and I didn't do anything for the rest of the day because I was just kind of weirded out by it. Hmm. Neat, eh? Awesome. And while we're on the subject, um, my wife is probably we for the office. We have um, we have a glass. It's a big glass door to this office where I'm sitting down to do the podcast. And she's probably like creepily staring in, but I can't see her. And she might just like tap to get me to hurry up with this podcast because uh, she just got back today. And all she can think about is the knitting expansion that came out for Sims two days ago or three days ago. Been started yet. And we're a one PC family and her first day back, I'm like, sorry, I got the computer all night. I'm hanging out with my bro, J Dog, you know yep. what I'm saying? So it's anyway, true. this is gonna be my last uh PC night for a while. Uh the podcast is going on hiatus for the next six months. It's been a pleasure. It'll actually be more enjoyable. We'll just cut you out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I, I had a good week. I had a good week. Thanks for asking. So I didn't mention this, but part of my week involved Netflix and I only noticed this mm. because you had mentioned something about Netflix or I saw a note about Netflix yeah uh, I skipped it because I was talking too long you okay. were talking a lot good lord uh but we were <laughs> we were because we went up there it was kind of nice because we got all of our evenings to just chill there was no computers we weren't like playing any games or whatever we were just catching up on some Netflix shows because I'm not into TV sure. like I don't, I don't tend to watch it so I have to tell you though I don't remember if I mentioned this in the podcast but we started watching a show called Snowpiercer have you heard of that one on Netflix? Yeah, I've Dude, heard of it. Watch it. And do you want why? me to tell you why? Because season is two is it gonna renewed. spoil anything? You know me no. in spoilers. You tell me like if somebody's hair is red and that bugs me. So the only thing I can the only thing I'm saying is that season two, like they did a they've announced that there will be a season two, but Sean Bean is going to be Oh in my kryptonite. Two. Okay, I'll I watch know. it. Now you have That's to, seriously right? like the only thing you could have said, and nobody would even know that. I was talking to my wife. Is there going to be a season two? So she looked it up, and she's like, uh, oh, yeah, it looks like they've uh, done a season two. She's like, who's uh, Sean Bean? And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, Sean Bean's going to be in season two. I'm like, she's, he's going to die. He's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> but heroically. As soon as amazingly. I was like, it's Ned Stark. She's like, oh, awesome. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, see, that's see, that's not even good enough. He's Boromir. Okay. He, he was Boromir before Ned Stark. See how I discovered Lord of the Rings, like or not, not Lord of the Rings, how I discovered Game of Thrones. I'd never heard of the series before. I'd never heard of the books, never heard of anything. I was in the mood for Lord of the Rings, but I, even though I'm a huge Lord of the Rings freak, I don't really like the movies. So I didn't really want to watch movies. So I was searching Sean Bean on my PVR. That's like your, yeah, I don't know. I think that's a Canadian thing in PVR. That's like your cable box that records stuff. And so I was searching Sean Bean movies that were there that I could watch. And I saw this Game of Thrones thing. I'm like, this is before TV was cool, right? Like, you know, so I saw like, okay, HBO's got this Game of Thrones. When did he start doing TV series? Okay, well, I'll check it out. Saw the first episode and I watched the first four that night. It was amazing. I freaking loved it. Yeah. But so anyway. my Netflix note was just, oh, sorry. I'll, I'll check it out because Mr. Bean, mm-hmm. because Mr. Should. Bean, my Netflix note was just, I was super stoked for the Dragon Prince was renewed, but not just for the next season, for the next four seasons, a new Witcher prequel will be coming out. That's not season two. It's like a Witcher prequel, a Splinter Cell anime series is coming out, which is cool. 
and some eagle eye online saw that they're filming netflix is filming f1 drive to survive season three well we were flipping through stuff on netflix to look at that uh f1 was one of the ones listed yeah and both of us watched the preview for it like the trailer for it and and it was funny because we were both like it actually looks pretty good and i was like yeah tyler talks about it all the time and she's like well then you'd have something to talk about i'm like nope i don't want to i'm not watching it. <laughs> it's my it's my layer cake <laughs> oh don't even bring up layer cake don't bring it oh my goodness i love those kind of movies lock stock and layer oh man um what's porco se didn't watch what what is that one the one with brad pitt and the and, and the pigs and the diamonds ace spade what's you remember what it is he's like a, a an irish boxer and you can't understand what he said it's done from the same guys that do lock stock i just can't remember it came out in brazil so i can only remember the portuguese name sounds awesome it's like the whatever that was your poe week because here's my awesome. poe week i didn't have one i got to see lots of tweets in the twitters and we're going to talk about that kind of stuff later but how was your actual poe week well, now that we're on to POE content, I'll do my best also to keep it short because we have a ton to hopefully get to today. But uh, somebody before like my POE week began when I was just doing guide replies, I got a private message from someone and it was a very kind, awesome, very encouraging private message. But they signed off with happy grinding. And I'm like, ah, uh, that'll go into the sweet innuendo bank right there. Happy grinding if you know what I mean. So that was awesome. So that definitely made my POE week a-okay. I had an awesome Righteous Fire session. Nothing could kill me. Well, except for except for one guy. But that was just because I used Val Righteous Fire at the totally wrong time. <laughs> I wanted to hit my Life Flask and then Val Righteous Fire, but I hit Val Righteous Fire and then my Life Flask. So my Life Flask didn't work once I died. So didn't work out for you, but I was, it was awesome. Face tanked, uh, Drox A7. Nice. And Baron A7. And so, yeah, it was, it was awesome. I got my, all my watchstones. I finally got them all. It's the first time I've gotten them since it came out. Yeah, it is. But I mean, that's, that's, you can kind of get the idea of how much I'm actually capable of playing standard and how I can progress. Yep. Um, Cause I mean, that came out in 3.9 and now it's, halfway what are we six weeks into 311 and i just got my 36 stone so mm -hmm. um but it was awesome awesome i fine-tuned my trigger happy that's one of the builds that i do it's a blocking build i fine-tuned my trigger happy replacement build that might happen so that was pretty cool with some help with some discord folks so thank you for those that had some input i i'm i'm trying to replace my ci build the one that i have the vortex ci guide that i have with kind of like a green minion gem, something that hopefully dodges as well. But I'm having a with like my play style, the one button like laid back play style, I'm having a really hard time getting legitimate damage. Like you can't do animate guardian with one button. It needs lingering blades. You can't do Cyrus. You can't do three out of four conquerors because they have no ads with animate weapon. You need lingering blades from ethereal knives or blade fall. And to make that one button is you basically need cast while channeling because you can't use minions. And that's a different note for another time, but you can't use minions with spell slinger. Well, you can, but you can't. So having a hard time with the green gem replacement there, but it's, it's doing well. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. I found some more missing gem, vital gem information. Want to hear it? I can't wait, please. Feed, I know you can't. Feeding frenzy support. Gives you the feeding frenzy buff. Cool. Good to know. The game doesn't tell you what the feeding frenzy buff is. Anywhere. You have no idea what it is. Mm. You might even get the icon, but I'm in on console. You can't even get it. And when you highlight on PC, it just says you have the feeding frenzy buff. So that would be good information to know. Still not, not as bad as the animate guardian not telling you that you lose all your items when it's dead. But yeah. And uh, just I've been actually playing while I've been broadcasting. I had about three good sessions of broadcasting this week, which is a lot of fun. Um, and I'm playing a uh, chart build. I think I've explained this one to you before. You're shaking your head, but I've got a smile. Is this your giant circle tree? Well, 
spoiler alert. So this build is the Guardian and only because it has that ascendancy node called Harmony of Purpose. That's the one where it gives you 10% chance to gain a charge on hit, like the, the standard charges like Frenzy, Endurance, and Power. And uh, so I'm using Firestorm because that's just a skill that hits a lot. And uh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. On the tree, there's, I'm going and I'm getting every single charge node. I'm just going along the outside path. And for each node, there's one branch of five nodes for the power charge that's at the top. And then the endurance charge and frenzy charge are right south of the tree. So I'm getting those. And then I'm just getting the life nodes that go in. And because it's Firestorm, there's the fire, I don't know, the fire cluster at the very top. That's about yep. nine nodes. I'm getting that too. And uh, but it's uh, surprisingly, there's a lot of life just to the outside of the tree. That's just two nodes in, right? There'll be the 5%. And the 10% or the 6% and the 8%. So there's a lot of life to it. And uh, I don't mean to brag, but it's awesome. <laughs> it's got to be having a good time. One of the, it, hey, it looks fun. It's just one of the funniest looking trees I've probably ever seen. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm actually really excited to see what it act, is capable of doing at 90 with a legitimate five or six link. I always plan around five links. You brought up that you were having a chat with people in Discord uh like about some of your builds and some of your ideas and stuff yeah yeah so while we were away um i tried to check in every now and then on discord and and sure. just to say hi or whatever that it it's really funny to not be on something for a few days and then check it and i'm like scrolling trying to catch up to stuff and and i'm yeah. reading the conversations and i'm like oh my gosh these guys are like they're having like legit conversations here. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's it's really funny because I'm scrolling through, going like, "Where can I, where can I get involved?" And I just can't. <laughs> I just read it all, and I'm like, "All right, cool, guys." You're you're three days late. Yeah, no, it was there was a lot of good subjects. I saw a lot of people learning on there, which is great. I hope whether you're on our Discord or whether you're in the community, don't ever be embarrassed about being wrong about something. Like if you're being a proud prick, sure, be embarrassed and learn the lesson, but don't be embarrassed about learning. Don't be embarrassed about being wrong about a mechanic. Like you're going to learn from it and uh, you'll it'll save you a ton of heartache <laughs> in POE land. So this week in POE was huge. It was. Cool. What do you got? I, I looked through everything. Now, I was more on the check a tweet side of it. Like I didn't stay as up to date as yeah. you definitely would have. The patch notes were to me, I, you probably have way more detail, so I'll leave it to you. But for me, I was like, okay, cool. Lots of fixes. Awesome. None of the stuff was super big to me. I will say, and this is probably going to come up and you may have something to add to this as well. They get, they, they released their statistics, which I usually love their statistics. This Every statistics, a good stat. I hated this one. I hated this why, one. Why, why? I don't care how many seeds dropped. I could not care less that 400 billion tier one seeds dropped. Cool. That doesn't, that didn't. It, it's not the same as like telling me a stat that lets me understand anything, literally anything. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of cool because you can see how rare some of the types of seeds were, right? Like, okay, these types of tier one seeds were less. I It was the least exciting stats I've ever seen. Besides, oh. I do really like seeing the challenge stats, like how many people hit, you know, 12, 24, and 36 or whatever it is. Uh, but other than that, these these stats were like uh, okay cool <laughs> like a million tier four seeds dropped does that tell me anything no no but it's cool to know you know what i like I, they don't mean anything to me but i'm like oh well that's neat and i got a smile on my face when i read it. i'm like oh that, that's you know cool. what i would love to see with that that tier four seed um show me the next stat deeper into that which says what percentage of players got those seeds so if a hundred percent of your players that are playing when you took these stats, what percentage of the players had the bulk of those seeds or something? Cause that I would really like to see. Cause I would bet that like 10, if that, I feel like 10% might be really, really high, but I would bet that 10 to 15% had the bulk of those 1 million tier four seeds. Right. Oh yeah. That'd be cool. Like how many separate individuals had tier four seeds? How many yeah, separate? Cause I would guess yeah, that yeah, the yeah. average players are not seeing a large number of the tier four seeds. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah. but yeah, that would be a cool stat too. And I would smile at that one too. What did you think about the, this week in POE? Oh, well, I mean, it's insanely busy. We'll do our best to keep it short, but there's a lot of really good stuff. Uh, first off, 
until August 3rd, well, our time. So wherever it is you are in the world, you get a free mystery box when you spend points, even if it's half a point. So go for that. What can you and buy for they, half a point? Everything. Okay. I don't know. Nothing. Maybe they'll have like a half point sale. No, they, what do they have? Five point sale? No, 50 point sales. That's what they have. 50 point sales. Now, I didn't realize this when they, I remember last week, I because I have a miniature mini black Labradoodle as yep. my dog. And so I have, I have a thing for black labs. And uh, I didn't realize it when they released the lab pet last week, because I mentioned, yeah, if it was black, I'd buy it right away. They already had two lab pets in this lab sec. And it, yet was like, people got overly excited about this one for some reason. Well, but they're in from the science scientist and project i forget which one like thermaturgy maybe it was um but it's like one's ha has one lab has like like a chewed up lab coat and the other one's like half a robot half alien type of thing but anyway it was cool let me just offend like 60 percent of the people out there again from a continuation from last episode one of my best parts about this holiday was we did not take the dog with us <laughs> <laughs> where where was chica my dog was so much happier without us. <laughs> <laughs> we had fat. She went and hung out with family. Like she was with hmm. my wife's family for a while and they were at like one of their campsites. So she had just like free reign to just run around and hump everything. And then the last part of it, she was with my dad. So she again got just like constant attention. And then yeah, we yeah. came home and she was like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> nobody cares. That's all awesome. my kids do. They came out with a ton more MTX, which is cool. And and this is just me. So GGG, don't listen to me. But as far as I could see, no Celestial. You don't uh, like that? You're waiting for more Celestial? You shove it. So they came out with some Void Emperor wings. Uh, they came out with the Karui Boeing Quiver. Uh, they came out with a new steed, which is cool. A Stygian steed. Do I say that right? Stygian? Yeah. Stygian? How would you say it? I don't know. It's not a real word to me. It's a path of exile word, though it's probably a real word, so I don't know. So it's not a horse? No. Uh, you don't... If a horse was a horse, if I was a horse and you're like, hey, are you a horse? But no, man. I'm, I'm a steed. steed. <laughs> I'm a steed. I could win it. Um, they came out with some tiny clockwork golems, which I, they look cool. I'm not a mech guy. Like, the, those aren't themes that I like, so I won't get them, but the, they look really cool. I like the smaller version of them. But they came out saying... Uh, they got like a, a clockwork golem theme for all your golems. I but they only tweet. released five. I oh, did you see the tweet? Yeah. Oh, awesome. So I thought it was hilarious. So anyway, I tweeted back to them because that was a tweet and I thought it was really cool. And they, I do like what they look like, but because there are six golems, not five, and they said we got a, a clockwork golem for all of them, I, uh, I felt bad for the carry-on golem. It was kind of like saying, hey, you're a family of six. You've won a trip to Disneyland for five. And so then everybody just looks at the carry on Gollum because he knows he's staying behind. Or you just buy a ticket for the six. Well, there's not going to be space. The hotel only accepts five. It's it's five, Justin. I did see your tweet. It made me laugh. <laughs> well, I'm glad it made you smile. Did you see the Infernal Demon King Portal? Yeah. It looks like one you have. I know. I don't like it. It's like the same skin, but a different color, but I still like them. I like them both. Yeah. That would be one where I wish I could like intentionally. It's say, not even like really different. They literally just swapped purple with red, reddish yeah, orange. I, I'm fine with that. The first one was cool. Mm. The second one's cool. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it looked fine, but it just it's like a it. copy of the. Well, how many portals can you think of where they're literally just a recolor of the portal? There's not a ton that are like that. This might be the only one that I can recognize. I just, yeah. As soon as I saw it, I was like, you son of a. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like still want your better. breach one. Whenever the breach one, if it ever comes out, I'm getting it. I just, oh, I love that breach one. You have that hand sticking yeah, out of the sweet. ground. Oh, it, it reminds me kind of like of King Manus from the Dark Souls 1 DLC, but cooler than Manus. Anyway, it's awesome. Did you see the fan art? I always like looking at the fan art. I'm not artsy fartsy, um, but I, I always really like looking at it. So if you like fan art, check that out. And then there were two bugs or two, sorry, patches. I should say not two bugs, two patches. One was a quick fix and then the other one was pretty long, but all, all legit fixes and they're all good. I had two shout outs to them. Um, one, and you've already previously mentioned this and someone in Discord also had some big hype about it, but they fixed a bug where some Xana mission variations weren't offered as options. But 
the single portal variation will remain permanently disabled. Good. Now, maybe it was mentioned previously. You and I didn't notice, but you had said earlier on in a previous podcast that I didn't think you hadn't that. seen one. And so that's awesome that now there's, in my world anyway, official confirmation that they don't exist anymore. Tyler, if I say it, it's official. <laughs> I should be used to that. I Come should on. be used to that. And uh, here was one. I just feel bad for all the people that were rolling like crazy and trying to get this uh, fixed a bug, which prevented Redeemer influenced boots from being able to roll attack, dodge and spell dodge modifiers together. So if you were gunning for that, I just feel bad for you. Now it's fixed. So lucky you suckers. Did you did you check out any of the interviews? No, I saw that they had one like I was reading just one in particular, but I didn't get a chance to actually read through it. Mm. OK, well, they, they what the, the first one that they put out wasn't really an interview is more of an explanation. Um, it was the story individual that came up with Kirik and how the importance of Kirik within the lore and the difficulty of adding him into. Well, because he has a big, big lore connection. Did they mention when he's going to finally kill off Xana? Uh, no, they uh, didn't say that. Did Sorry. they or mention him. why, mm -hmm. for some reason, he doesn't have pockets to be able to sell stuff to? No, mm -hmm. no, they didn't. Wow. Most important questions. Yeah, you should. Well, you should have really? replied because they asked feedback at the bottom of that post about storytelling and such. So uh, it's called if, if you're actually interested in giving because they were they were curious. The individual is curious about feedback for how storytelling works, what people like, what people don't like. It was pretty open. So if you have feedback to lore or storytelling in any way, it, check out, look for the post that says timelines and retcons. Is that a word? Retcons? That's Make what sure said, your, anyway. your feedback is better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm curious if they would, in a Q&A, quote yours. Just before you get on to your next one, I did see this, actually, now that you're saying it. And I read the subject and I was like, don't care. Oh, uh, see. Now, this has nothing to do with the individual. I'm sure they're lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I just got turned off by one word. So I don't know what word that would be. So this week, GGG interviewed Jeff, who I know is GGG Jeff, and he is the console boss. Ding, 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 and ding. oh, my goodness, read it and appreciate it because it was awesome. It's uh, it actually was really cool to hear kind of some of the background that it's not too detailed, but hear some of the background of how different console land is and how many more hurdles they have to go through with uh, Microsoft and Sony as opposed to just the ease of PC land. Um, but man, the console honcho, Justin, is Canadian. So you can't diss console now. Yes, mm -mm. I can. Still no, will. And, and for I know almost every I mean, I know PC is basically dead. So for the majority of our listeners who are console lovers, he referenced Jeff at the end of his interview. He mentioned the new consoles coming out. So I've had some questions about how the content's going to come about with uh, the new consoles coming out. They haven't really mentioned anything, but he said new content's coming out, the new consoles, and we're hard at work. So super excited about that. And then there was also some then and now pictures. And I think those are cool. Those aren't really anything we could do about with the podcast, but I love seeing because I, I, I mean, I started playing POV years ago, but it had already been out for years like I started in the early twos I think and uh, it might have even been 2.0 but I started really early twos and so it's really cool to see all the pictures that you would have seen or maybe even the pictures that existed before you mm -hmm. right because you're beta and so I, I like seeing them nothing I can really do about the podcast so that's about end where it ends and I too like seeing the challenge stats I really feel like I didn't uh, thoroughly investigate it this time but challenges seemed a little bit down than usual like they peaked at 12 and then just plummeted it seemed though congratulations to a few of you in our discord that have gone on to 36 i think malzacore mentioned that my apologies if i got that wrong but good job good job this week in poe was huge so thank you thank you thank you so i've been um having a rough time this week or two you know kind of like coming up with replacement builds for two of my builds that i have and I just want uh, right now they're like personal favorites. Um, the damage is on the low side, but they're still steady. But uh, I think I'm kind of changing the criteria of what I want my guides to be. And I don't think I'm going to have like any just personal favorites for guides anymore. I'm just going to make them a lot more. And two of them are already legitimate. Almost everything clearing content. They're good for all 
you know, legit portions of the game anyway, not uh, not hologram masters or any of that nonsense. But um, so I've been trying to go through and I've already mentioned that I've kind of already come up with a um, dominating blow replacement for uh, for my max block guide. But I was trying to put blocking into my new dominating blow build. And uh, so I was kind of looking through what other people have. I, I normally like to come up with my own thing when I'm making my guide and then or my builds. And if I'm stuck, I check out what other people have. And so I was I was looking around and I was really surprised how many people said they had max block builds while they were using glancing blows. That kind of bugged me a bit. You know what I mean? Like sure. to me in POE, when you block, you're taking zero damage, right? Like anyone can pick glancing blows and you're going to have max block. It's crazy. Like that's strong. just well, that's well, it's think about it as like a four to five, 50 percent instead of 20 like that's that's awesome yeah you have to travel to get there yeah you need some investment to equal your spell block to your attack block but still like it, it takes more investment than fortify you just slap in the gem so it's different but it's basically a 50 percent fortify instead of 20 percent. but like that's that's not blocking though it's damage mitigation well it's blocking block but is, it's not max blocking it's blocking well even if you're at the the cap right Without any fancy stuff, there are 75 spell, 75 attack block. It's still not blocking because you're taking damage, right? In, in POE, blocking is taking zero damage. So it kind of, it's not a criticism to any of those yes, builds. I'm this sure they're personal. awesome. No, no, no. It's just, it was just one of those things where when I see block, it, like if I'm interested in a block build, if I wasn't a guide writer, I was someone that played other guys and I was looking for a blocking build, I wouldn't be looking to take damage when I'm blocking. And so... I kind of like irked me how many guides I had to go through to find a max block guide that didn't use glancing blows. Just because glancing blows is so strong. It is. It's super strong. But yeah, I know what you're talking about. But it's not zero damage, which is what I was looking for. So anyway, I dubbed that section false advertising. If you know what I mean. Forgot to put that in a lot earlier. Mm. Now, when I was looking through my green gems, right, trying to get like my green minion gem builds going, I really want animate weapon to work. I love the prospect of animate weapon being able to do damage while I'm running around like an idiot, like with my tail between my legs. Ah, and, you know, but my minions are still doing damage. How uh, you can't really do that. Because you always have to be facing the enemy and at least shooting your bow, right? Because you can't proc it. You have to do damage with the Herald of Agony. You can't do it with totems or mines or anything like that. So you always have to have some sort of aggression. But I like the freedom of Animate Weapon. And I really wanted it to work with Spellslinger support. What it says on there, like it says on Spellslinger support, it says there's certain tags that it doesn't work with at all. But then it says it cannot modify minion spells. Do you know what that means? Wait, Spellslinger says that? I didn't think Spellslinger said that. Oh, it doesn't have it in here. We have to load the game. So anyway, Spellslinger supports. It's kind of weird. Only half of the information is on the wiki because it's an active skill and a support skill in itself. It's one gem for both of it. On the support version of the skill, it says can't support. Uh, what did it say? Um mines traps or totems skills that use traps mines or totems but it also says cannot modify minion spells and so that i i have no idea what that means because i haven't really seen that anywhere else as far as i can remember and so anyway i really wanted to use spell slinger with a lingering blade weapon which would be what ethereal knives or blade fall and then my other spell support skill would be uh what's it called animated weapon right animate weapon but when I put spell slinger support on animate weapon, it dropped its damage to absolutely nothing. It still did damage, but it, so I, I, I don't know. It didn't really explain it. Um, the wiki doesn't have anything about the actual spell slinger support. Have you seen something about cannot modify? I've only seen cannot use. So unleash is another one that does that because I remember looking into unleash with okay. um, some of the, like, because you could use it with SRS. It would actually be quite nice, but uh, Unleash has that cannot be modified, cannot modify skills of a minion or something to that effect. I don't really know what that means. Is that the skills that the know. minion uses? I don't know, but I do know that it doesn't work, which is weird. I get the impression, but it's, it, it's a complete guess that basically it cancels out any supports 
you can bring up a minion with this skill if you want to, but all of its supports that you link to it are going to be useless. That's mm. what I get. Like, cannot modify minion spells. That's, to me, what modifying it would be, would be adding a support gem to it. Yeah, except that it's weird that it's worded because it's cannot modify the skills of minions. Yeah. I don't really know what that means. Yeah, I, so anyway, I, that's how I really wanted animate weapon to work, but I can't, and I can't find any other, like, one-button way to get lingering blades and animate weapon out. So I was, I was hoping... Maybe maybe somebody can write us later and tell us exactly what it means if we're right or wrong on it. So anyway, yeah, it's it's been a lot of those uh, theory crafting. I, I really nailed. I'm really excited about my dominating blow and herald of purity build that uh, that I want to come out. But I just cannot cannot figure out a good way to get both legitimate herald of agony because I basically gave up on anime weapon for my green minion gem because I just can't get a good lazy way to play it. So Herald of Agony it is, committing to poison. I can't get a good way to do both good Herald of Agony damage and my damage. You know, like if I stay on the right side of the tree, I'm getting awesome me damage, but my Herald of Agony is giving me maybe 100,000 damage. And I mean, that's not worth taking up all the majority of my mana reservation. I could easily fill that with auras and get way more of that me damage for me. You know what I mean? And so and then if I go up all the way and all the way up to spiritual aid, so minion damage impacts me, it's nothing compared to what I can get on the right side of the on the yeah, on the east side of the tree. So I'm having a hard time with this green minion business. Why do you why does it have to be green? Because I want blue minion build, a red minion build, and a green minion build. And I have very few options with the green minion build. So I'm <laughs> having a hard time reasoning. deciding. I'm having a hard time <laughs> deciding. So anyway, I might only have three guides next league unacceptable <laughs> if i can muster the time to create a new guide as opposed to simply just update these ones uh so we i'm sorry moving on from your green minion thing whatever we've talked before about leagues different leagues league mechanics we like league mechanics we don't like we actually wanted we were hoping to have a conversation about this last week we just couldn't get the time for it i'm going to pose the question to you because you originally wanted to pose the question to me if oh, you it. could phase out league mechanics, would you and which one? You'll have to remind me what I'm talking about, but it is related. Okay. So ask me the question again if I get too off topic. Oh, God. To me, Path of Exile is all about the variety of builds you can do. It's about unlimited theory crafting. With the, GGG tries to make this game as balanced as possible. They have hundreds of skills, thousands of nodes to pick from, insane amount of weapons and mods. Like, it's just infinite your possibilities. So when they force you into a timed situation, to me, that cuts so many players out of the equation. And it, sure, it might set, like, a benchmark. Okay, well, if you can't do this incursion or you can't do this a, a timed thing, I, I can't think of any other because I'm going to talk about incursion, but you can't do this. Uh, you need to make a better build now. But that's not how it, it's a benchmark, but it doesn't help anybody. You know what I mean? And to me, as soon as you start adding, you have to do this content fast, like the same reasons you hated delirium. You force people into a specific play style. And that's the complete opposite thing that I love about Path of Exile. Now, that might my, my perspective or what I see in Path of Exile might not be something that GGG like that might not be the vision they have. But to me, those timed events like incursion, having a timer makes zero sense to me. You could easily take the timer out and just change how the minions are, or the rewards for that specific incursion when you exit and you go back and see Alva. But, you know, it's all about making the temple, you know, like I don't like timed stuff. Ever. Even with Abyss, that time stuff is so less stressful. You you can like it pauses for you. You know what I mean? Like the Abyss is the green crack in the ground, right? Yeah. So Abyss, like if you're if you feel like taking your time and killing stuff along that path, it'll wait for you. It has checkpoints where it waits for you. And it's only once it's opened up that big circle in the ground when those rares come out that there's basically a timer. I'd get rid of all time stuff. Like to me, when they've come out of when they've made content core, most of it has been like, here's the whole league. 
here, but I'm fine with portions. I'm fine with very small amounts of it here, there. Like, I, I kind of like what they did with Delirium with the exception of, well, I don't know, like even Delirium's timer, I found it for me as a slow paced player, very generous, very generous. So for me, my number one is completely change Alva, totally change Alva. And I mean, for me, I mean, you just get rid of the timer and that would that would solve a million issues for me. There's a lot of other nitpicky things I would do, but timed things make no sense to me in this game. Anyway, Alva's that one. How about you? How about you? I would get rid of Harbinger because I oh, now why I love Harbinger. Well, let me just I guess I would say I would keep the orbs because I do like a lot of the orbs that were introduced from Harbinger. So just keep them. But I find Harbinger dumb because it's fine in the sense that you're getting more mobs, you know, but I don't like yeah. the fact that I'm waiting for them to spawn. And okay. I now I, I'm actually, I don't actually know from your end, but when is the last time you actually got enough of the unique pieces to build one of the Harbinger specific unique? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I put them in my cool stash and then that's it. Like I would keep the beachhead cause I do like the map. The map's fine. So maybe if you kept that version of Harbinger alive, but just Harbinger in general, I don't really care for it. So that's one. Uh, I would get rid of Talisman because I just think Talismans are stupid. I know people are probably going to disagree with me, but I just don't hmm. like them at all. Just like a guaranteed corrupted amulet. You don't like the. It's a, it's a guaranteed alchemy shard. Like it just, it, that's what it is. They're just mm -hmm. so unlikely in the way that they are in the game right now to find this talisman okay. that drops corrupted to be build worthy in my opinion and then delirium i just i still hate it i what i would say with delirium is piss off with the mirrors and make clusters and delirium orbs just global drops and simulacrum splinters hmm. i know the argument that they made that chris made like where he talked with the team and they said well you know this is the delirium what I don't even know how they worded it, but like it's like, well, this is from the delirium monsters. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. But it's just, we it, don't really care. It's though. dumb. Move on from it. Like the mirror mm -hmm. to me is just, it's not enjoyable. I don't, I don't like it. I love delirium orbs. I love the simulacrum and I like cluster jewels. I think those are all great, but tying them into this dumb event where we're first off, it's, it's not even coming up that often. I don't know what it is that you're supposed to do to a map to increase the chances of them. Yeah. If it being there, it's, I'm not seeing it. Just not seeing it. I just don't like it. I like, I love the parts of delirium, every other part of it, except the mirror. Hmm. Don't like the mirror. So either, yeah, make it, make it global drops. I don't care if it has no lore value. That's fine. I'm all right with that. I've, um, I've been trying to unlock my atlas and getting all 36. Uh, it is 36, right? Yeah, watchstones. And so I've been doing all T16s or 15s, rarely 14s, only if I didn't have the 15 or 16 of the influenced area uh, region, I guess you should say. And, uh, and uh, you know, if it's a T16, I'm using my chisels. I'm always adding um, fragments to it, right? The sacrifice fragments. I'm adding a scarab to it if it's appropriate for the build. And like, I'm, I'm filling it up with everything I can, not one delirium. So I don't know what my, what the ratio versus investment is for it. But I finally, finally had one large cluster jewel drop from the only mirror I've seen since I started playing console in 311. And it came while leveling my charge guy. Just leveling though, not mapping, not paying for it. The cluster jewels I found were dropping consistently if I got a mirror. But if the mirror spawned was just like a big, it's not even a flip of the coin because that's 50-50. It was like rolling a 20-sided dice. Like it just, it seems to be very rare to get them. I don't know what you're supposed to do to increase the chances to get I just don't like them. Just give me all the drops and global drops or do something magical with it. I don't know. I don't care what it is, but. Are you fine if the mirror stays, but. There's no timer. Well, that's a delirium orb then. Right? Basically. What if so? What if instead of like needing the mirror, the map just had that same percentage instead of the same percentage to get the mirror, it just had the same percentage to actually make the map delirium. 
it was just a chance that happened well i guess if you if the mirror wasn't timed and once you hit the mirror it just affected the whole map like right let's say that's what the thing was yeah my problem is still the fact that i don't know what it is it's not like incursions or blight or something where it's like hey this has a 10 percent chance to happen mm -hmm. it's not there's no way delirium is a 10 percent chance it's just not no no so maybe if it was like that if it had like okay it is a 10 percent chance to drop and once you open it you don't have to go because i mean both of us don't like the time to side of things of most of the stuff within path of exile right but to me you've they've made it even worse because at least an incursion there's a timed event but the only thing that's affecting is whether you want to do the crazy stuff in the temple, like the double corrupts and the like the crazy stuff. In Delirium, they based drops upon you being able to complete that timed event. So mm -hmm. like there, it's true. gated behind getting the splinters, getting the clusters, you know, like that is gated behind how well you do in this timed event. So yeah, yeah if you if it was like all of a sudden like, hey, it's going to be like the blights and it's got a 10% chance to load in a map. And then take out that time part. You open it up, and when you choose to open it up, you're actually affecting the whole map, and it will just stay like that, as if you had used a delirium orb. I don't see the negative side to that. Even if they yeah. decrease how how fast that like reward ramps up or whatever, I don't really care. Yeah. But yeah, no, uh, that I'm not a fan. I just don't like delirium. I haven't liked it though since it came out. I'm I'm hoping that there's a lot of people that are like us that don't like timed. Because even if you're fast, even if you have a great character, it's nice to play at your own pace. Right. Like if you were to play a new game and then all of a sudden you came across this timed thing and you were figuring things out and learning and, you know, I, I don't know, I, I in any game, I don't like timed. Like when I play Splinter Cell or when I played Splinter Cell, because I haven't played Splinter Cell since I started POE. But when I played Splinter Cell, I was fine waiting in the shadows for five literal minutes for that guy to come by that corner at the perfect angle so I could do the perfect joke. I was fine waiting. Like I like playing at my pace and I hate time stuff. I'm with you. The, you know what is gated behind Alva? Basic crafts. We forget about that because we've unlocked them and they're done. But if you can't do like up to level three rooms, you can't, you can't get some basic crafts for your crafting bench. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's kind of sucks. What do you think of the frequency of delirium? Do you think it's that's terrible. too little still? Yeah. yeah, I I wish I knew a little bit more to how much investment is required or like if I'm investing enough to actually get it, you know, like if I just have bad, I don't like that at all. Don't don't make something gated behind how much I'm investing into a map. You know what? You know what the gate is to that? It's the quant the quantity of that map. I'm already increasing mm -hmm. the percentage of drops. I'm making it more difficult in order to increase the percentages of drops. Don't put the chance of a delirium mirror spawning within that area behind that as well. Like, I, I feel like all you've done is you've said a big F you to the people who are just like trying to skirt by and get the maps done. They're just, maybe they can't do it with all this added difficulty, added uh, scarabs, add whatever. I don't even know what it is. Added Xana mod mods. I, I don't know what it would be. I try and invest as much as I can. Right. But I just don't like the fact that they're taking major parts of builds and orbs and the game cluster jewels for the love of god like that's a relatively yeah. big part of the game and you're gating it behind something that first off i've not ever seen anything official that says this is how you increase your chances of a delirium mirror i just haven't so i haven't seen that yeah it makes it really hard to be like and i will say like i said i've gotten lots of cluster jewels if i get a mirror i feel like i've gotten one probably every single time but I have gotten very few mirrors for as much as I've played this league, which I played this league a lot because I do like it. I, I don't like I don't like how they've brought Delirium into the game. I am a hundred percent fine with them saying "f the lore." This is going to be a global drop. They've done that with other things before, so I the Delirium mirror to me is just dumb, especially when there's mm -hmm. nothing that actually states like here's how you increase your chances because yeah. I am already juicing my map for a specific reason, and it's not to get a delirium mirror. It's because I want that particular scarab. I want it up my quantity by five percent. I want to whatever it is. I just yeah, I'm not a big fan. What if it was kind of stayed with the same mentality, but you were guaranteed a delirium if you got triple digit quality quantity? 
So if you got 100% or more quantity on any map, you're guaranteed a delirium. I, I like that flat number idea, but I would hate that every single time I had that quantity, it would be delirium. I, 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 still, I still don't really, I would, I would actually rather see a 10% chance like a blight. I would yeah, rather I so, see too. it just become a percentage based thing to happen because if I'm, I mean, it, it let's, if you're doing a 100% plus quantity map, you've probably juiced it relatively well. You've probably got a number of mods on there that are going to maybe make it a bit of a struggle. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you're Superman and this is no problem. You can just fly through it. But then you add the delirium, which is a timed thing yeah. into that. So now you've got a difficult map and you've added in delirium. Now, I know there's people listening that be like, oh my God, that's amazing. I would love that. Well, sure. If you had a a build that was like set up well, that you had good gear and you were ready to go, that is probably a pretty awesome combination. For the person who's like just trying to complete the red maps and accidentally valved it to 101% and now you're going to yeah, be hit. Yeah. I mean, you could choose not to do the delirium, but why on earth would you not do it when that's the gate to get cluster jewels and to get. So anyway, I, I would yeah. rather just see them say, hey, it's like everything else. It's got a 10% chance to spawn in the map. And you know what? That time part of it, we said piss off because we think it's stupid too. That's what I want. The, the one thing that doesn't make sense to me about delirium is that it doesn't its mechanic of how it spreads doesn't make sense for many maps. There's a lot of maps it does make sense for, but let's, what are there, 140 maps or something? I forget. There's some of them delirium fog moving out makes sense for, right? They're that linear per se, but there's a lot where that does not make sense. And for cluster jewels to be behind that, ah, that's, that's crazy. Like what if you finally got the delirium to roll and it was on a map that just doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Like, and then you're, you're fighting, the, even if you have a great build, you're just. Well, that's why I like your idea of you walk through the mirror and it, that you've just shifted the map. It's now affected the whole map and you're going to have to go through it with a, a delirious state. I think that's fine. Or you could choose to ignore it. I like the prospect of choosing to ignore it. If you're that player that's just desperately scraping by trying to get your Atlas bonuses checked off. And you're like still waiting for that one weapon to drop that for some reason has eluded you. So you're still pretty weak for where you are in the game and you just desperately trying to scrape. I like the prospect of being able to ignore them. So I guess at the end of this conversation, I'd say I'd still probably want the mirror or just the orb. Like I still want the choice to do it. It'd be a hard thing to roll flat guaranteed. When you when you've turned it on, you still have the arrow to turn it off. It's now yeah, spread, yeah. it's throughout the map, it gets more difficult as you're completing the map. And if you realize like, hey, this is just getting too much, I can I can hit the button and now my delirious state is done. I can't turn it back on. And you know, if I got anything out of it, I get something out of it. But the uh the gated behind some magical things that nobody knows is annoying, and then gating relatively key parts of the game behind even that just seems even stupider. Yep. In my opinion. That was mechanics. What do you think about crafting recipes? Or I guess I should say maybe vendor recipes. Are there any vendor recipes that you think are totally outdated? I'm terrible at them. So tell me yours, because I, I, the only one. What do you you'd like? You're dramatic. awesome at the game, but you ignore vendor recipes. So what, what do you use? Uh, I, I literally I do chromatics and I limit it to. And then I obviously do the jewelers. I will, if I'm doing a specific type of build, then I'll Google some of the good ones for while you're leveling, you know, like, okay, I want a plus okay. one fire wand or something. I, there's yeah, no I way I can tell you them. No way. There's no way I could be like, okay, I need this type of ring combined with this particular thing. Uh, I would be Googling it 100%. Mm -hmm. I, I would love for them to simplify it. And maybe that'll come in POE too. Like I, I, I just, I would love, I don't have an answer for what I'm looking for, but I would love for it to be obvious. Like if I'm looking for, I don't know, a flask that like the Ruby flask, right? Where it decreases your fire damage, taking your fire resist, all that kind of stuff. If you, I don't know, took a, a rare or a magic fire item, right? And then combined it with the flask, a normal flask, it would, you know, become that flask. Like I'd like something that would be simple for a complete new person to figure out. 
but based on the rarity, it would change its power. You know what I mean? So you could have, I don't know if it would be magic or rare or whatever it would be, or if there would be two variations of magic, you know, so like, okay, if you combine this magic version of a ring with this normal flask, it would be 20%, you know, fire resist or whatever. But if you combined a rare version, it would be 40%. I like it'd be something like that. One that I wish, one vendor recipe that I hate having in my filters, and I don't have it in my filters, but I wish the vendor recipe was different so I could get the reward, would be chisels. Well, that's the one with the hammer, right? Right. And it's all based on them, those hammers having quantity or quality on them. Mm. Oh, it's just, it's such a stash hog. It's just not worth it. You need so many of them for one chisel. Or, I mean, sure, you might be able to just, like, save it so that only, you know, I don't know, 14s or higher are dropping for you. But it's, like, it's a lot. It's a lot because they take up so much stash space. Like, for example, for you, you could limit your six sockets to be two by three in your inventory. You could ignore, you know, the two by fours if you wanted to. And you're going to get seven jewelers, which now that's huge and valuable because they can turn into fusings too, right? I know fusings are going by the wayside in a million years, but that's, I mean, that has, it has a double value there. You can choose to limit your chromatic recipe to an inventory space of one by three, right? Daggers and wands. Super. You can't do that with the rock breaker. And it takes up, it's a two by three every single time. It is so huge. I would love for them. I would love to make, like still make it work, but have like still make it a good investment to get the chisels because chisels have a pretty big value, but I would love for it to be a lot more efficient for me. You know what I mean? Like if they had it, even if they just changed the item to be a one by three, right? Just change whichever item it is. Maybe you can't for lore reasons, but oh man, that would be the one. The cartographer chisel recipe, I want that to change for sure. I think it's a little outdated. Even Chris, I think Chris mentioned it in his Bay class interview. He said, I don't think anybody does it anymore. No, I don't. I, I definitely don't. I, I, I don't really like many of them. So chromatics and, and jewelers, that's it. I use, I, use, I use a lot more vendor recipes. I definitely take advantage of them. I'm always taking my overstock. I'm the person that takes 5,000 wisdom scrolls and trades them in portal scrolls which tra- change those in for transmutes and like I, I i love going through and doing all the different vendor recipes i have my exalted shard recipe tab i have my chaos and regal recipe tab but yeah and i do want those specialty tabs as Such well a weird i one. hope they do that oh that'd be so sweet anyway total total change the subject a little bit better to the build section you've done a lot of work on the east side of the tree over the last few weeks and uh like you you've you're a big fan of the trickster what else have you done on the east side of the tree you did saboteur this league um you've 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 done lots over the over time i don't know if i've ever seen you do a pathfinder though i have not recently but i have yeah so we had someone in discord my apologies i do i do forget who it was but they were talking about survivability they're just theory crafting and they were doing their own thing but they were talking about survivability on the east side of the tree and it is a stark difference to how you make a build on the west side of the tree. Do you mind saying, like, I, I obviously have, have my versions of how I get my survivability on the right, on the right side of the tree. How, how do you go about it? What are some of the key things you look for? Because there's obviously a lot less life on that side of the tree, right? Yeah. I mean, evasion and dodge, though. Mm-hmm. There's so much on the right side. Mm-hmm. Well, it's very different. That's definitely where I would get most of my defense from. I, you can get a reasonable percentage of life. I also typically, I mean, trying to think, I can't even remember specific builds recently, but with like this league, Ball Lightning Minor, I'm also not getting hit a lot. I'm blinding mm-hmm. because of my ascendancy. Like it's just a different form of defense. But the one thing I will say, as much as I have played a lot on the right side of the tree, I 100% more uh, enjoy life and block and armor because they are set i'm my armor is going to block 60 percent of incoming damage or whatever the number is yeah i'm not a big fan of like well i've got a 60 percent chance to not die from this one big hit so uh, i do i have played that side of the tree more more recently uh, but i definitely prefer something that's typically more set in stone like this is what yeah. my defense is 
for sure. But yeah, I'm, it's, I'm it's kind of evasion. on the same page. Yeah, yeah. The thing I don't like about evasion is it's only for attacks, right? It's not about spells. And as you're playing through the game, you you're... get spell dodge though. You can get so much spell dodge. Well, spell dodge, yes, but that's not evasion. And so. Uh, you know, that's just a different form of investment and you can only invest so much. The thing I really like about armor is no matter what, it's physical damage, right? And you have your elemental resist you're already trying to cap. And so the thing I like about armor is it's irrelevant to the type of damage that you're getting, whether it's physical or sorry, it's always physical, but it's whether it's attacks or spells, it's doing the mitigation. So I like that consistency, like you said as well. Um, but the, the range is a big component for the east side of the tree, for sure, right? You're, there's just safety in range. Uh, if you're doing melee on the right side of the tree, movement speed is a huge factor. There's so much movement speed that doesn't exist on the left side of the tree that is on the right side of the tree. So movement speed is huge. I love the dodge. There's only a few dodge nodes. Um, one gives you dodge while you're phasing. One gives you dodge while you're channeling. And then the other one's just that nice dodge cluster where there's two keystones, one after the other. Uh, really like those but yeah it's it's different because you have um a f you, your builds are a lot faster on the uh on the east side of the tree and that even if your melee is probably your biggest portion of survivability because you're looking to get like a light a build if you're staying on the east side of the tree you're probably at 150 to 175 percent life unless you're throwing es in there so anyway just want to ask that because we had some people, I saw some people talking about that in Discord in there. So I figured even though that was uh, about a week and a half ago, we'd throw that in. I was mentioning the fact that you get like, cause I can have a ton of spell dodge. You don't like spell dodge? Oh, I love spell dodge, but I was talking evasion. Right. But the dodge and is evasion is only attacks. Evasion. Right. But if I have like 45% right. chance to dodge a spell, that's still a pretty high percentage. Right. But I, that, that's just a different mechanic. Isn't isn't armor only physical though? Armor's physical, but it's irrelevant to the type that it is. It's attack and spell. It's all physical damage. Whereas evasion is only attacks. Wait, what? Armor is what? Armor is just physical attacks. Ar armor is the no, physical damage. Physical damage, right, but spells can also be physical damage. Okay. Yeah. And then evasion is only attacks. So any spell coming at you, evasion has zero value to yeah how many how many physical spells are there that enemies are doing maybe There's... not many but but you're taking physical damage and you already have your elemental resists right but you have your elemental resist no matter what regardless of whether you're playing evasion or armor but evasion has nothing to do with spells period so every single spell coming your way evasion has no help with only dodge does yeah so if you have like an evasion stacked build, that's only for some of your, some of the damage that you're not choosing is coming at you. Hmm. I'm really curious how many physical spells there are that enemies do. Cause that, that's the only spot where the armor would kick in versus the fact that if I'm playing, especially playing on the right side of the tree, I'm going to have a percentage. Uh, I could have like on my, my minor, I have a, uh, I don't think I have it anymore on low life, but prior to low life, I think I had like 45% chance to dodge. Let me see. 45% spell dodge, 40% dodge. And yeah. then after those, whether those roll or not, then the evasion kicks in. So I understand what you're saying okay. with regards to armor is going to be against the only spell it's having any effect on is physical, a physical spell. Right. And sure, there might not be that many, but you're guaranteed with armor, you're guaranteed your physical mitigation. And then because you're already going to be maxing your elemental resist, you're, you're basically resisting all versions of damage. Right. I guess right? the difference, though, is you're talking about playing on the west side of the tree, more, most likely, more than, definitely more than the east side of the tree. If you're playing the east side of the tree, you're counting on that dodge first off to just flat out not get hit. Right. But then if it is going to your resists are going to play effect to all the spells, which is the same for armor. But with armor, you are going to take damage. You're just mitigating how much of that damage you're going to take. So I'm just using physical as an example. Whereas with yeah. dodge, you first off can just flat out dodge it, it. And mm -hmm. then you could evade it or you take it. That, and I, that's kind of going back to what I was saying before, where 
one one reason I don't like the right side is because there is that like I might live, I hope I don't die, but you have almost two chance or the potential to have two chances. I'm just curious. I yeah. don't know. Maybe there's a lot of physical spells in the game that enemies do. I don't actually know. Maybe not, but you're never going to evade a spell. It's always going to be resists, and that is your only mitigation to a spell when you're an evasion build outside of dodge. Right, but even with outside armor, the only time it's helping you is if the well, spell I guess that's is true. physical, yeah. right? True, and there's, yeah. I don't know, maybe there are quite a few spots where that kicks in, I'm not really sure, but yeah. I, that's, I, there's not really any other way to play the right side of the tree. Yeah, no, for sure. On a side note, uh, when I'm when I'm considering taking dodge, I almost always try and min max it. Like I want my tiger hook to give me that extra six percent dodge attack, and I want that four percent spell. What is it? The spiked shield that gives you four percent dodge for spells. And I I'm always doing melee when I do dodge because I want those extra perks. Hopefully, when they redo bow implicits, that they'll add dodge to a bow. I purposefully farmed at Ziri this league just for her steps, for her boots, because you get 16% chance to, uh, well, I, I guess you can range, but cha- yeah, that's with the dodge spell. So hmm. I, before I went low life with my tree, yeah, I was at 40, I think 45. And- yeah, yeah. I'm, I love my escape flask is never uh, a quicksilver flask. It's always a couple quartz flasks and that gives an extra 10 percent to both which i absolutely love so i love the prospect of getting you know like 60 plus percent dodge to both i wish i wish that there was an ascendancy maybe there will be eventually but like the gladiator has that node where your spell block is equal to your attack block and it also includes your max attack block or your max spell block is always equal to your max attack block. I really wish that last keystone in the dodge section was that <laughs> for dodge. You know what I mean? I might because I always want them to be even. I always want them to come up, but it's always a spell that's that five or seven percent lower. But anyway, yeah, survivability on the uh, east side of the tree. It's catch me if you can. That's what it is, whether you're ranged or melee. So phase, phase, phase. Yeah? Yeah. But speaking of, I mentioned channeling while dodging in there. Spell Slinger support, which we mentioned before, it's doing really well. I've seen a lot of builds with it, and you can be super creative. I mean, it's obviously a volatile dead dream, right? Because that's one of those like skills where you need two skills to make the one skill work. And so it's just a dream come true for that. Have you seen a lot of cast while channeling builds? I feel like Spell Slinger just like threw cast while channeling off the map. It's funny because I, I saw your note about this. Mm-hmm. And so I looked it up just out of curiosity and you just know you just mentioned Spell Slinger just as a comparison wise. I, I haven't. But as a comparison, Spell Slinger right now, based on POE Ninja, is in 16 percent of the builds. OK, 16 uh, percent of builds are using it. One yeah. percent is castwell castwell channeling yeah and it's a lot of minion yeah yeah a lot of minion based builds yeah yeah it would be it it would be those those ones like skeletons you you used to be able to but now they cast three skeletons at once so it'd be something like srs or animate weapon something that has a high limit but only casts one at a time i could see it used with like a minion zombie zombie bombs too but yeah only one percent I'm curious, though, like it doesn't seem to have a lot of offensive value, um, but it does cast often, right? Like once it's all leveled up to level 20, cast while channeling will cast. If you only have one spell linked to it, it'll cast it three times a second. If you have more than one spell, it'll take turns. So it'll do each spell one or sorry, it'll do one spell every point three seconds or every point three, three seconds. But. Of of the ones that are using it, 61 percent of them are using Either the stone golem or the carrion golem. Is it just see what I do to guarantee my golems up as I attach them to cast cast and damage taken? Doesn't guarantee them up all the time, but while mapping it does. I wonder if that's just to keep their perk up while they're doing something else that's secondary. I was thinking of cast while channeling for animate guardian, but oh, so see the thing that hidden. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna say 
I guess they're using those as their main skills, but what a lot of, so I'm just looking at a couple out of curiosity real quick. Cast while channeling is connected to cyclone, obviously, and then fortify yeah. flesh offering, desecrate vulnerability. Yeah. So it's all secondary. Yeah. Yeah. For me, like that would be the only way that I could think of doing the lazy version of animate weapon. Right. But then I have a one socket taking up a four lane. You know, I have mm-hmm. cyclone, I have cast while channeling. I have blade fall for the lingering weapon. And then my fourth socket is my first link, right? It'd be animate guardian or animate weapon. And then I'd get one support. You know what I mean? Like it just seems so, so weak. I'll bet you once they update it, it'll say can't support minion skills. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I get it. It's good for secondary. But anyway, I was just, I, I thought a lot about that after because I, I really enjoy it again as kind of a support thing. But uh, I feel like Spell Slinger just threw Castwell channeling out the window. We'll send it some pizza. Do you I want to punch you in the face for sucking on your candy? It's a lozenger, and it's so I don't have to drink lots with my loud water bottle while we're doing a podcast. Guess what's really easy to take out? You drinking. Guess what's not? So <laughs> guys. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about a while ago in one of our after darks about the path to the shaper and elder but it's a really good discussion so i'm not trying to like double dip our content here but i i think it's you and i have very different opinions on this so i'm going to bring up mine you give me your thing you mentioned a few times about how much content is getting added to the core game and you've expressed that your hope some content will eventually get phased out chris has since mentioned that some of it will. Unfortunately, it wasn't one, one that we were thinking about, right? We were hoping like Alva would get tweaked as opposed to, um, what was it he said we were going? Beyond. Beyond, beyond. right, right, right. Now, but you know, some stuff's going to get phased out. Now, I'm on the other side. It's like there's, there's so much rare and hard content in this game. I love that there's a million different side quests that there are as you're progressing through endgame. There's some content you might never even know exists if you're not someone that's scouring online. Like, yeah, what's the, what's the, what's the boss battle with the um, prophecies? Oh my goodness, I can't remember. The um, Pale Council? Are they? Yeah, the Pale Council. Like you, there's, you could play for a long time and if you're not scouring online, you'll never see that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like it, it's now, if you started playing today, who's the Minotaur? Like. Wow, that's a crazy endgame boss out of nowhere that Xana just gave me. That's pretty cool. Like, I like that there's just a million different things. Now, what would be nice is if there's a way to focus that content, right? So, like, if you're, I'm thinking about the Shaper or the Elder. So, as far as I know, the enemies, the path to the enemies, like the Elder Shaper, is quite spread out and it's random, right? Like, it's Xana, you might get a really rare drop, but there's nothing specific that you can do. And it would be pretty cool to be able to focus on specifically getting these enemies. Like the only thing that I can think of is like a scarab, right? You're guaranteed to get influence, elder or shaper influence on the map based on the scarab you might be using. But see, I'm kind of torn. Like I like the ability to focus that content because those are epic battles, but they're really rare, but they're very random. And uh, I don't know, I guess I like, I would love to be able to focus and be able to do those often. Yet at the same time, I love how rare they are and obscure they are. And I love that aspect of the game. Like if there was a million 10% chance possibility mods in the game, I would, I, I would love it. I would love it. Where, where do you fall with the path to the Shaper and the Elder? Do you wish it was more focused? Do you like how vague and random it is? What do you like? I, I am not a fan of how much they've killed the whole storyline behind Shaper and Elder. They're more just content for gear now. They're not part of the storyline like literally at all. And so yeah. I do I do feel bad for people coming into the game that are missing out on that whole storyline because the storyline for me of Shaper and Elder is so much cooler than the storyline of the Conquerors and Cyrus. Because the the storyline for me, and again, I don't know all the lore, I'm not into all that kind of stuff, but from what I've seen and heard, people like us decided to stay in the maps and take over the Atlas and blah, 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 and we're now we're going to kick them out. 
versus the storyline behind Shaper and Elder, which is just so much more involved than what Conquers of the Atlas is. So I don't know if I care so much about how you go and fight Shaper and Elder because I don't know the solution to that. I mean, you, I, yeah, I don't know. I find most of my abilities to do the stuff that got me into Shaper and Elder was through Xana, through her like in map quests that she would give i don't mm -hmm. know what the fix is though I, I i like i do like all the content i hate cyrus i would rather fight uber elder every single time than have to fight cyrus it's not a fun yeah. fight we've had this conversation on the podcast we've had this conversation on discord i know some people will disagree with us and that's totally fine but it is not a fun fight it's just not it's just i it's the mechanics to it are dumb it's not enjoyable it's luck it's luck yeah it's too much it too much can happen when you can't see it and and me and you have had a disagreement about this a lot where you you know you really don't like the off-screen stuff right. and i've argued that i don't find a whole lot of off-screen stuff but on the cyrus fight oh my god it's like 90 percent of the time we talked about this on discord too like you die if you die you're in a lot of trouble because getting back into the fight can be a struggle like if you're in the third the final stage of cyrus and you don't know where he is Oh my God. Like all of a sudden he's like, he says his line and then he fires off that beam yeah. that for some reason tracks you. And you're like, what the hell? I didn't even know where he was. So yeah. uh, that's a totally different thing. I like them adding content. I don't have a problem with them calling some of that content if it doesn't work or make sense. But I feel like they've lost. I feel like new players have lost out on the cool storyline of Shaper and Elder. Yeah. The, the Cyrus story is not as cool to me. Yeah, I know. Uh, one thing I do really like that they did when they added the four new influences, the Conqueror influences, they kept the Shaper and Elder influences still really strong. Like there wasn't a huge modification there. Some of the stuff got moved to other influences, but the Shaper and Elder are still very coveted influences. So in terms of the gameplay aspect. I could see how they don't want those influences to be very common. But at the same time, maybe it's just because we're, you know, I guess we're at the era now where we're pre Cyrus players, right? So I have the desire to go back and do those old school battles and I don't really want them to be rare, but I get that their content needs to be rare. You know what I mean? Like I'm on both sides. I, I want to fight them a lot, but I still want those items to be rare and super valuable. The thing that my problem, though, is that you can chase you can chase the the conquerors and you can go and fight them when you want and how you want with the shaper and the other. You can't. And in fact, if you're in trade league, easy, go and buy the shard. You can go fight them. But that's dumb. And we've had this conversation last league, too. And that's coming from a trade person. I don't want to rely on trade to be able to play the game yeah. the way I want to. If I'm counting on trying to unlock elder, my I don't know any other way to do it except either hope for a drop or go and do one of Xana's missions and hope that she gives me one. Now, when she gives me one, there's a one in four chance of it being one that I don't have, right? Like okay. yeah. when I'm when I'm at three of four, I'm now I, I literally have a 25 percent chance every time that it even pops up as a possible one to be that fourth one that I don't have yet. I will say mm. with Harvest. Harvest actually brought in crafts that let you change fragments from one type to another. So I can change an elder one from, you know, eradicator to constrictor or whatever they are. But that's pretty cool. Um, you, that's it. That's your, there's no, there's no, there's no way to chase elder. There isn't, there's nothing that I know of in the game that if I want to fight shaper and elder, I can go and, you know, like focus on this and then I can go and do it. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's too bad because it is to me, it's a really fun part of it. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I'm tossed about I'm, I'm so 50 50. I'd be fine with whatever they choose. If I could focus on it. Awesome. If it's super rare, then those battles when they well, happen, you can make it nostalgic, rare, but don't make it RNG. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I don't mind if it's rare and less likely to happen. I like that I can throw a scarab on and I can, you know, increase my chances of getting shaper or elder loot. But mm. when you're putting the chance of actually going to fight one of them as bosses behind RNG, I'm not a big fan of that. I'd rather them swap it. Make it RNG for me to go fight Cyrus and let me go back to fight <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shaper and Elder. Yeah. Make it so that the Conquerors unlock 
oh, what were they called? The Guardians. And then the, the Guardians unlock Shaper and Elder. And then Cyrus can be the new Itziri. That'd be awesome. Okay. Never those those fragments would only get used for increase increasing quantity in a map. <laughs> Quality in a map. Now, I remember for those for those that don't know, I'm gonna be saying EO and EE. EO is that keystone elemental overload. EE is elemental equilibrium, both keystones on the tree. A long time ago, there was an AMA with GGG. I think it was John and Chris. And or sorry, Jonathan and Chris. I don't think I've ever heard anybody call him Jonathan. So or John. So I shouldn't say that. So anyway, long time ago, there was an ask me anything with GGG. And they were saying that elemental overload and elemental equi elemental equilibrium were so overpowered that they most definitely needed to be tuned down. Did do you remember that AMA at all? Did you hear about it? No, I don't. I mean, it was I think it was like two or three years ago, three years ago now. I actually think, though, they, they haven't changed it since they've mentioned that, but I actually think that all the changes that GGG has made within the last 10 leagues have inadvertently fixed elemental equilibrium, not EO, but EE. Do you find elemental equilibrium relatively balanced in your opinion right now? You know what? I, I'm not going to be a great person to give you any answer on this one, but I will give you a stat. Just play around within your head. I love stats. Let's go to Delirium. So this is last league. I'm pulling up this stat for you. In Delirium, it was a combined 8% of all of the builds that had either uh, EO or EE. So Elemental Overload or Elemental Equilibrium. A total of 8%. Or, or and. Or. So okay. 5% of the builds of all of Delirium, of, of all the players in Delirium, had Elemental Overload and 3% had Elemental Equilibrium. That's actually... At very small, especially because yeah. if I compare that to Harvest, in Harvest, a, a combined total of 27% had one or the other. 14% had Elemental Overload, 13% had Elemental Equilibrium. So it went from oh. 8% in Delirium up to 27% in Harvest. What do you think it was about Delirium? I don't actually know. I, do, I, don't, I, I never paid attention to either of those two skills. I've used them before on the tree, but I have not paid attention to changes to them. Hmm. I'm trying to remember last league if I used them. I don't think I did. EE works great for a lot of different builds. I use it with my Righteous Fire build, of course. It's awesome for dot stuff because dot doesn't hit. It's also great for minions. Minion builds are fantastic because they don't proc elemental equilibrium. EO... I, I, I still find elemental overload too strong, but I find elemental equilibrium. Why has do been you balanced. find it too strong? I, I see for me right now, I can use Cyclone that has a five or six percent crit chance, have zero investment into crit chance, and I always have with Cyclone elemental equilibrium or elemental overload up always with my. So I have Cyclone going with my Righteous Fire build. And I have Elemental Overload selected, and it's always on. Always. Now, granted, that's the nature of Cyclone, but I am also have like a 45% hit chance with Cyclone. Like, I have zero investment into accuracy, zero investment into crit chance, and it's always on. I think Elemental Overload... Now, I'm, if I was a GGG staff member and I said this in public, I'd get raped, but I think EO right now has an eight-second duration. If you've crit within eight seconds you get this damage bonus. I think it should be four seconds or something, whatever the math would be, but I think it's way too long. I think you need to have, uh, right now, I, I'm not really a crit-based guy. I like my minions. So for me to be able to use that with zero investment, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, granted, it doesn't work for minion builds, which is why I only use it on my Righteous Fire guide, but... Um, elemental equilibrium i'm finding that it is actually now with all the changes they've made in my opinion with how i like to make my builds i've found that it's really well balanced it's really good pros and cons and i'm finding that with elemental equilibrium and this aura setup i'm getting roughly the same amount of damage that i would without it so i'm not choosing the pros and cons of elemental equilibrium i'm choosing the pros and cons of the build itself Right, whether I'm going with elements or pure physical or 
you know, if I want to deal with the risk of increase or, you know, the in-game realization or reality of how quickly I'm switching elements. So I haven't played with that side of the tree enough in the last couple of leagues to really be able to have much of an input into it. So I'll agree with half of whatever you just said. <laughs> okay, yeah. Does that seem fair? Yeah. Yeah. Justin actually didn't even listen. He just went to go get a sandwich after he gave me his stats and he just came back. So I welcome wanted back. Welcome cream. back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think it's about time we wrap up episode 39 of Forever Exiled. I am Justin, aka Tag. And I'm Tyler, Wrecker of Days, if you know what I mean. I'm going to get that every time. I wish I said it more. I wish I said it more. Nah, I think we all agree you should not. Thanks a lot for everybody joining us. You can find some more information in the show notes below. We've got our website, foreverxl.com. We are on Twitter, foreverxl82. What else? We've got Discord. There's a Discord link. We, our Discord's awesome. Everybody's awesome in there. So join us in there. Uh, we've got Patreon. If you're curious about our Patreon, you can check us out with the link below. And that's it. We have maybe some up, uh, exciting news coming in episode 40. We have a killer interview. I'm saying all this stuff right at the end of the episode because I know nobody <laughs> listens to this part. We have a killer <laughs> interview coming up pretty soon. So that's exciting. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for joining us. We'll catch you guys in After Dark if you're a Patreon and otherwise in episode 4-0 next week. Peace. If you know what I mean.